Uh, so could you talk about the movie reference in this film? Sure, the movies that, that, that influenced it? Yeah. I mean, there are many. I mean, I, the, one of the things that uh, Mark and I did at the beginning when we were sitting down to write is we talked a lot about Caesar's character, where we wanted to take the movie, but we also watched a lot of movies, and obviously all of the Planet of the Apes films, which we didn't have a chance to watch previously, you know, since I haven't watched them since I was a kid, really. So we watched all of those films, mm -hmm. and they influenced the film, of course, in, in a lot of interesting ways. But the other things that really influenced the movie, like a lot of war movies, like um, Bridge on the River Kwai, mm -hmm. which is another pure Bull story, ironically, that was a really important film because it was something that was a war film but in the foreground it was the battle of wills between the two characters and the essence of their nature that was the story and that's really what we wanted to do here apocalypse now uh kurosawa movies westerns like uh sergio leone um movies like uh clint eastwood movies like uh the outlaw josie wales like a revenge tale um and the movie goes through those transformations i mean even like um a really big one for us was the great escape you know, because the movie goes on this path. You follow Caesar on this journey. He's thrust into a war. It's a full-bore war movie. And then these events happen that send him on a, re on a revenge mission, and it becomes like a Western with, this, with just the, kind of this posse. And they're moving up the river like an apocalypse now. They reach Colonel Kurtz, if you want to look at it that way. Um, and then they're imprisoned in a way that becomes uh, very much like The Great Escape. And then, of course, there are giant battle scenes. And then at the end, um, to take it a step further, it becomes almost like a biblical epic. It becomes... There's, there, there are elements that uh, are not unlike uh, the Ten Commandments and the parting of the Red Sea. So, um, you know, you go on quite a journey, and there are a lot of references. Um, do you think this movie could help people to see our own defects, defects as a species, as human species? Um, well, I'm sorry. Uh, do you think this movie could help people uh, to see our own flaws? As, oh, yeah. As I think that's the point of the movies. Yes. I mean, for me, what's so exciting about this franchise is that you know, it's a summer movie, right? Which means that it comes out at the time when all of the big spectacles come out. It's a big budget movie, but it's unique in that the subject and the spectacle of the movies is photoreal apes. And the photoreal apes are really us. It's holding a mirror up to our nature, to our behavior. And I think for me, what I think cinema's power is, is to put you in the shoes of a character who you are not, which is really about empathy. It's about extending your sympathies to, yes. to the rest of the world. And I think, for me, that's the most hope that you can have, is looking into our darkness, looking into our better nature, and recognizing yourself and all of those things. And do you think that the, the uh, apocalypse could happen in a real world? Like in do I movie? think that could happen? Well, certainly, uh, I mean, I don't think it would happen exactly the way it happens in our film, necessarily. But yeah, we are, we are definitely... Um, we, we are definitely responsible to some degree for whatever our fate will be, and I, I certainly hope that we will uh, avoid that kind of cataclysm, but, um, you know, only time will tell. I, you know, the, the, in a way, science fiction is, is, is often cautionary, and you hope yes. that um, it reflects the worst of what could happen, but uh, who knows. Um, the apes uh, ends up being that uh, beginning on the end, right? Because uh, that phrase uh, is quoted by the colonel around the movie. Yes. And I think the apes uh, end, end, ends up uh, being that. The beginning and the end. Well, you yeah. know, it's interesting. The, that Alpha That's Omega, <laughs> yeah, that Alpha Omega um, iconography actually, for us, was inspired by, that was iconography in Beneath the Planet of the Apes. The human uh, mutants who are left they're praying to the nuclear weapon. And, um, and that whole idea somehow stuck with us, this idea of a group of um, soldiers who felt it was their um, mission to be uh, both the beginning and the end of the human race. If they lost, then the human race would perish. And, um, and so that almost took on, and it's interesting because that the Alpha Omega obviously uh, it connects to Christianity as well. And there was a kind of religi religiousness with which they mm -hmm. came into this battle and this idea of, um, of their fate. And so all of that is, in, is entwined in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a very complicated way. Um, and yeah, I guess if you look at it, to me the whole idea was that in the end the great equalizer is nature. You know, the planet was once uh, ruled by giant dinosaurs and it only took a, a single comet to wipe them mm -hmm. out. And the idea that these two species would be pitted against each other, but really it was nature in the end that would determine the fate of, of both of them. 
Um, that's an aspect of the film too, and the beginning and the end.